The setting change-up from Washington, D.C. to Payday 2 is supposed to be an enormous living, breathing world that aims to add new layers to the gameplay experience. Dallas, Hoxton, Wolf, and Chains are on the returning cast roster, and the story is picking up where it left off. Our favorite heisters are coming back from retirement. I got to play two heists during the preview, Capital Bank and Surface Art Gallery. Capital Bank was your Welcome pretty to standard my heist where you go Don't in and try to, to grab all the cash you can like, while share. also reaching Enjoy your goal of video. infiltrating the larger vault and getting a bigger cash out. Surface Art Gallery, on the other hand, was an interesting twist on the heist system with the goal being to steal some of the displayed art in the museum Mission Impossible style. Capital Bank felt like a familiar return to the Payday 2 days. During the preview play period, I was teamed up with two devs and one other journalist. Dro dropping us into the game immediately was a bit overwhelming. For context, we were dropped into matches without playing the tutorial mode, so I'm sure this won't be as overwhelming to day one players, but there are definitely way more elements to Payday 3 that can get to be a lot to remember, especially if you're just going off what Payday 2 felt like. We attempted to try the quieter method of stealthing, but because of the confusion of what the new heist phase was, we ended up triggering security and just going guns blazing. This was kind of the theme for the entire play session. Even though we did get a grasp of the new concepts and mechanics, the actual stealth play is extremely difficult and really punishing if you make the slightest mistake. I'm all for a challenge, but it was unfortunate that we didn't really get to experience a proper stealth playthrough during my hour of hands-on time. The concepts of stealthing in this heist game that's all about high-octane action are really cool, but I worry that most people won't be able to experience that very much, since most people are used to just going guns blazing from the jump. Most players won't have the patience to move really slowly and deliberately to set up a stealth intro when it feels like you'll just eventually have to go loud once the heist really swings into gear because a single mistake from anyone will guarantee an immediate alert. Speaking of going loud, the Capital Bank heist has you throwing thermite to breach the vault walls while fighting off waves of law enforcement who get increasingly beefier as time goes on. You start with fighting standard cops, then SWAT-like members who have heavier armor and riot shields, and then you'll battle a terrifying division of special ops returning from Payday 2 called the Cloakers. These guys got an upgrade in Payday 3 and they can mask themselves and go invisible and reappear wielding blades that can knock you on your ass with one hit. Once you do make your way into the vault, you actually have to take even more time to make sure you deactivate the security ink pods that will explode if you try to steal the cash under it without successfully deactivating them, rendering the money useless and uncollectible. Once your team has all the cash loaded up in their bags, you can make your way out to the streets and start your escape. The art gallery heist, meanwhile, was a lot of fun since it was a new environment and gave off an Ocean's Eleven vibe. Stealthing here was pretty difficult too, since this map requires you to climb around if you want to find a quiet way into the art museum. The gameplay loop was similar to Capital Bank, but instead of cash, you steal paintings or small statues and you have to verify which piece of art is the one you're looking for. For instance, one of the objectives was to validate the real painting from fake copies by getting a blue light tool to check for blood that was only on the real paintings. Once validated, you cut through the glass on the display like a true art thief and make away with treasure. I enjoyed the gameplay and environment way more in the art gallery, and the actual museum has a few levels and exhibits you have to navigate through. Hilariously, you'll actually end up using the You Are Here maps in the levels a lot to figure out where to go, as if you're actually visiting a real museum. When things inevitably go sideways, negotiation is by far the most interesting part of Payday 3. You're able to actually negotiate with the police using your hostages trapped in that building with you. So you have to manage the hostages while also raiding the bank or museum you're stealing from. You can use hostages as body shields since security won't shoot you if you're holding an innocent person, or you can choose to release a few hostages to buy you some more time for the heist. Overall, I'm pretty excited to play Payday 3 again, especially with the same friends I played Payday 2 with and relive some old memories in a modern setting. Payday 3 is also going to be cross-platform and cross-progression, so you can play anywhere and with anyone you want. It's set to have quite a bit of post-launch content updates as well, like new characters, heists, weapons, and updated skills and challenges, so hopefully there's a good flow of new stuff to keep players invested. Payday 2 had 20 DLC packs after launch, so it's not a huge worry of mine. For more on Payday 3, don't miss the recent release date trailer and, of course, for everything else in the world of video games,